Mr. President, uh, standing here listening to the debate and discussion from colleagues on both sides of the aisle really makes the point that many of us saying, <clears throat> we need a new budget agreement here. We have people, I think we all agree on both sides of the aisle, we need to defend America. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to look at national security, uh, <clears throat> both in its funding for the Department of Defense, but where else we need to also be looking at what are the components to national security. Many of the S many of the key agencies that are not in Department of Defense are also important to the national security. And yet, at the same time, we have defense with its budget gimmick, and that's what it is. It is a budget gimmick to avoid the caps that we have on spending on both defense and discretionary spending. Now, what this bill is, is a gimmick to lift the, uh, to have the money through something called OCO, which was meant to be a specific, it stands for Overseas Contingency Funds. It was meant to deal with specific wars. Now, it's been plussed up by several millions and millions of dollars to avoid the budget caps. Now, this isn't a budget debate here, and I'll be saying more about it on the floor, but I just want to say to my colleagues, think about national security. Yes, we do need a strong national defense, and we do need to support our troops, and we do need to support our military families. That's what I'm going to be elaborating on in a minute. But we also have to look at what are the other aspects. First of all, you need a State Department. Part of national security is diplomacy. You need a State Department. Second, in the State Department, you need embassy security. If you don't want another Benghazi, you must put money in the federal budget to make sure we have embassy security. You've got to fund the State Department. That's in discretionary funding. You don't like the cyber attack? We're going to have meetings and we're going to hold hearings and hoorah, all the things that we should have been doing three to five years ago, but were stopped on this Senate floor because of concerns of the Chamber of Commerce that we would overregulate. But we have a Department of Homeland Security. It needs to be funded. It's in discretionary spending. You want to have a cybersecurity workforce? Yes, they need to be trained at our great colleges and universities. You need a Department of Education with the Pell Grants and so on to be able to help our people get the jobs for the 21st century so they can do the type of work that we're talking about we need them to do here. I could go through other agencies. I'm not here to stand up for government agencies. I'm here to stand up for America. I'm here to say, yes, we do need national security. We need to fund the Department of Defense, but we need to fund those other agencies and programs that are integral to national security. That's why I think we need a new budget agreement along the lines of Ryan Murray, and we need to end sequester. I hope, and I call upon leadership on both sides of the aisle, but particularly on the other side of the aisle, let's get to it now sooner rather than later. I'm the Vice Chair of the Appropriations Committee, working very closely with the esteemed colleague, the other senator, the senior senator from Mississippi, on trying to bring bills to the floor. But we simply have to come up with a new agreement. So we'll go through a lot of parliamentary motions and come motions, but I'm not so sure we're going to get the locomotion we need to look out for America. We cannot let our military be hollowed out. We cannot let our country be hollowed out. We need to really move ahead with this new agreement. And a perfect example, sir, Mr. President, is why I come to the floor. All through this debate, I've listened to the most important tool to a strong military is the military themselves, the military and their families. And consistent through all from both sides of the aisle is we must look out for our troops. Well, I couldn't agree with that more. Yet, what is it that we know in this bill that tucked away is really an erosion of one of the key earned benefits that our military and their families and the retirees have. Commissaries. 
commissaries. Now, commissaries have been around since the 19th century. They've been around since 1826. Military families have been able to shop at networks of stores to provide modestly priced goods, primarily groceries, to military families and to retirees. There are 246 of them, many in our own country, many overseas, many in our country where they're the only place our military can go. In other, and there are those in some other countries where they're not even looked upon and welcomed in some of these countries, even though we're there. So what is in this bill? Two things. One, let's privatize the commissaries. The other is, let's cut their budget by $322 million. Now, I am for saving in Pentagon waste, but I will tell you, no money is wasted at a commissary. In fact, just the opposite happens. Military, the commissaries, are the most popular earned benefit that the military have. And also, and this isn't Senator Barb talking, this is coming from the military themselves. If you listen to the National Military and Veterans Alliance, they say this, commissaries and exchanges are a vital part of pay and compensation. The military community greatly values these benefits. Service families are, and their families have the proposed cuts, they said, would dismantle commissary benefits relied upon and also cost tri by shortening hours and reducing and raising prices. That for what we look at commissaries, we know that people shop there, they save money, and at the same time, they're also a major source of employment. Now, what I want to do is work with my colleague, the senator from Oklahoma, a member of the Armed Services Committee, Senator Jim Imhoff, he and I, and he, it's his amendment, want to prevent the commissary privatization pilot program. I also have an additional amendment that I would like to restore the $322 million that cuts the co uh, commissaries. We have, uh, we have uh, an offset uh, to be able to pay for it as well. The benefits of the commissaries are significant. That's why I want these two amendments to be offered. They feed our troops, they help military families stretch their budgets, and they provide jobs to, to military spouses and military children old enough to work and military retirees. The military families tell me that they get significant savings, sometimes as much as 30% on their bill. For a family of four, that could be $4,500 per year. And you know what? As I said, 60% of the commissary workers are spouses or retirees at these um, commissaries. So DOD says we want commissaries to be more self-sustaining. It has proposed cuts of more than a billion dollars through 2020. They're talking about, a, in fiscal year 16, cutting 322 million. Next year, they want to cut a billion dollars, and they also want to look at how to privatize. Now, joining with my colleague from Oklahoma, the distinguished uh, senior senator, uh, Senator Jim Imhoff, he has legislation to deal with the privatization. In this bill that's pending, they implement this commissary pilot plan. Well, we've heard that before. Uh, I think it's a plane without a pilot. But we don't even know if it's a good option. It was made up by, it was made up by Pentagon bean counters, Pentagon, Pentagon bean slicers, who were told, find savings, so they went after the commissaries. Well, the senator uh, from Oklahoma and I want to require the DOD and GAO to study the impacts of privatization before a plan can be implemented. In other words, before you privatize, why don't you study the impact? The senator from Oklahoma is proposing that this study be due in September so that we could have, be able to act uh, appropriately in our appropriations. And I support him in this amendment. 
And I also am looking for support in the cut to commissaries. Right now, proposed in both the authorization and then they tried it in our appropriations bill to cut the appropriations by $322 million. This means it would cut hours. So instead of operating seven days a week, they would be open five. It would raise prices in many instances by as much as 25%. In far-flung places like Hawaii or Alaska, prices could even go up by as much as 50% because of the, of the formula being used. Mr. President, this just isn't right. Of all the places that we can save money, let's not go after commissaries. Let's not go after commissaries. They help military families and retirees stretch their budget. For many of our young military, particularly the enlisted, the commissary is the place where they learn how to stretch their dollar. And at the same time, it provides employment to military spouses, in some instances military t uh, 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 children, and also to retirees. Now, what is the problem here? We can't get votes on our amendments. We can't get a vote on the privatization issue proposed by the gentleman from Oklahoma, and I can't get an a vote on my amendment to restore the $322 million. Now, I know that the leadership is now meeting on how to wrap this bill up. Well, I don't want to wrap this bill up, okay? I think that what we need to do is to be able to vote on these two amendments. We've had all kinds of amendments, like we had one on the sage grouse. Now, I know the sage grouse is a protected species. As an appropriator, I had to deal with this as a rider uh, on the appropriations. So I'm not against the sage grouse. I'm not against talking about the sage grouse, but why? In all of the problems facing America, do we need a sage grouse amendment on defense when I can't get a, a vote on, on protecting commissaries, protecting an earned benefit of our military, helping them stretch their dollar, making sure some of them have a chance to work uh, on a military base? Why can't I get an amendment? Why can't the distinguished senator from Oklahoma get a vote on his amendment that would call for a halt to the privatization pilot until we get a study from GAO on impact? So you can stand up for the sage grouse, but I tell you, I'm standing up for military families. So I urge the leadership at the highest level and the leadership moving this authorization to give the imhoff mikulski anti-privatization of commissaries a vote and give me a chance to offer my amendment. Let the Senate decide. Let's not have me stopped and stymied because of parliamentary procedure. You might say, and to everybody listening, well, Barbara, you're pretty outspoken. You're not shy. Why can't you offer your amendment? Under the rules of the body that we're now operating, I've got to get consent. That means all 99 other senators shouldn't object to me offering an amendment. Well, I'm stuck. So what I need is for the leadership to give me the consent to at least have my amendment discussed and debated in the light of the day, and I want to hear their justification on why they have to go after commissaries. Let's stand united. Let's get a new budget agreement. Let me offer our amendment. We shouldn't be fighting with each other uh, over these things. Instead of going after commissaries, let's go after the guys in the world, and let's do it in a united way. 